When I came up with this assignment, students were like, what? We're writing a textbook? No, I don't want to do that. Hi, I'm Jessica Kruger, a clinical assistant professor in community health and health behavior, and I wrote a textbook with my students. People joke in my classes about Kruger stories. I like to put a personal touch on things. I'm often asked why or where the heck do I come up with these ideas? It's not that I have some stroke of brilliance, uh, but it's more of let's do this. I was actually at a conference and while I was there, I met some really dynamic folks. I heard it from a presenter, Robin DeRosa, who'd actually written an OER textbook on how to write OER textbooks with her students. Very meta, right? I'm sitting in the audience and I realize at that moment I have a brand new class that I'm about to teach. And the topics in it are very diverse. And in fact, I would need to buy three different textbooks. Cost is a major barrier for our students, so, but it's not just about the cost of the textbooks. In fact, uh, if students were waiting for something like financial aid to come in, they would be missing the first few weeks of content. And I don't want my students to fall behind just because of financial barriers. They can't control when financial aid comes in. So I got this weird idea. Uh, my fall class of 75 students was going to write their own textbook. It was beta tested with 12 graduate students. I figure if it can be done with 12 graduate students, why not do it with 75 undergraduate students? More manpower, right? Sounds like a good idea. This class is called Models and Mechanisms in Public Health. And we cover topics that are very broad, such as environmental health, health disparities, and health behavior theory. When I first designed this project, everyone asked, what are you gonna do if this doesn't work? I immediately replied with, of course this is going to work. But in the back of my mind, I was really concerned that it might not happen. So at the beginning of this course, before we started this project, we actually talked about what Creative Commons licensing options were. And we actually chose CC, BY, NC, SA. So this ensured that no one could take their work and make money on it. When I handed out this assignment, it was actually only worth 10% of their grade. So how I set this up was to break the class up into groups and each group wrote a chapter. I think the challenging part with any group is that you always have someone who maybe doesn't contribute quite as much. I told my students, hey, if you're in a group and someone doesn't pull their weight on their portion, you don't have to do it. In fact, your chapter just won't have a summary or your chapter just won't have that section. That's okay. I really started to get buy-in from students uh, and I really think this buy-in was grounded in the trust that we had created. Many of these students I had had in previous courses, and so they always knew when they walked into Kruger's class, they were going to have something new, something novel, and they never knew quite what they were going to get. So I set up Google folders for each group, and each group had a folder in which they created a team contract. Barbara Oakley writes a really nice article about the importance of having your students learn about group work and to create a team contract. If you looked at their contract, you'd see they're all very different. Some of them say we'll meet two to three times a week. Others say things like give constructive feedback and to help each other remember we have a common goal to work together. Now this is in their own language. I didn't give them any prompts on this. They were only provided with the article to read. So this contract served a few different purposes. One. It was for them to come up with a consensus on the project. Secondly, it was for them to grade each other based on their own ways of evaluation. When I gave them these, their chapters to write in the Google Doc, it was really similar to an outline of any other book chapter. They had a title and then some objectives. Underneath their objectives was a placeholder for them to put a picture. And then the headings of introduction and summary and work cited. In between those, they had some subheadings related to the objectives for that chapter, which I gave them. 
Some of them had a few resources at the bottom where I said, check out some of these sites. I noted which one of the sites were OER and said, you're welcome to reuse some of this content. So this provided them an opportunity to learn about reuse. Take it, paste it, attribute it, that's fine. And I actually encouraged them to do that. The other caveat to this crazy assignment was the fact that they had to do this before they learned any of the material. In our syllabus, I ended up writing our first chapter to give them an example of what I look, was looking for. They had to turn in their chapters two weeks before they actually learned the content. Essentially, their peers were reading the content as they had produced it. I jokingly say that it was a little bit of encouragement, a little bit of risk, and a whole lot of hope. But they got it together. They did it. Essentially, all the chapters really started out as a skeleton, and they were able to use those learning objectives to create the content, and they built it. So after they created it, and before everyone else was able to read the content, I took time to review it. I made edits, and then I put it out onto our UB Learn site. And how I put it there was within the Google Doc and allowed students to make comments. Students couldn't edit the whole content, but they could make comments for their peers. So this allowed them to learn from their peers of what could be missing or what could be added to this chapter. I started talking to them about the transferable skills they were learning, about how cool it would be to be a published author, that they could put this on their CV as something that they've done. And guess what? They were doing research. They were looking up content. And all of these skills and this knowledge they were creating began to, began to start to click with them. On the last day of class, I actually threw them a celebration. This was when I revealed the full book to them. Previously, they'd only seen chapters as Google Docs. I think we sometimes get stuck in the idea of what if it fails? What if students don't like it? But you really don't know until you try it. I get the general sense that when we talk about open pedagogy, that sometimes we really aren't sure what we're talking about or even how to do it. And we don't necessarily know how it's gonna turn out, but we really just have to take the first step and just do it.